Hi friends, I am Manmad Krishna. You are watching Manmad Krishna Food Tech Channel. Today's our topic is hazards in food and food industry. So first we will discuss hazards. Hazard is nothing but it's a it's an agent. The biological or chemical or physical agents that is reasonably likely to cause illness or injury in the absence of its control. So we will discuss what is the biological hazards, what are those and the chemical hazards, physical hazards. Before discussing the hazards, I will give you the brief introduction about the brief history of the initiation of the food legislations and food standards across the globe. In 1937, around 1937, USFDA started initiating the food laws. In 1950, around World Health Organization also formed the food legislation. And after that, in 1960-65, CAC, Codex Elementaris Commission also started implemented legislations and regulations, made it regulations. In our country, India, the food legislation started in the year 1954. The Bureau of Indian Standards started regularizes the Food Adulteration Act in the 1954. And then in the year 2006, FSS Food Safety Standards implemented uh, during the past decades, the Bureau of Indian Standards Food Adulteration Act evolving into the Food Safety Standards, regulations, rules and regulations. In the year 2009, FSS Food Safety Standards as released draft guidelines in the year 2011 FSS AI means FSS Food Safety Standards evolved as Food Safety Standards Authority of India. So they have released the rules and regulations guidelines for the food producers or food facilities, restaurants who are exporting or who are implementing these things. Why? Because why I am telling the history of food legislations and food regulations. Why these came into force during the past decades or during the past century globally. FDA also implementing making stringent UK all countries. The food regulation started 50-60 years back 1940, 1937, 1939. If you go before that there were no any food legislations and food leg regulations. Why? Because I, I'll just brief you. In the beginning of 18th century, in the beginning of 18th century, the world population is about 1 billion. In the beginning of 19th century, the world population is about 1.6 billion. In the mid of 19th century, 1950, AD, 1950, the world population about 2.6, 2.7 billion. In the year 2000, the world population reached to 6 billion, 6.15 billion. In the year at present, the world population has increased 7.7 billion. Due to the rapid increase of population, there is a huge demand for the food supply. There is a huge demand for the foods. Food producers day by day decreasing. Food demand day by day increasing. So that's why the government also making more and more stringent. Stringent measures, stringent regulations, stringent norms came into force. Nowadays, we have seen that many diseases coming into the force, many disease outbreaks are coming. Why? Because these are all due to the rapid increasing of the population, due to the rapid urbanization, due to the rapid industrialization, the food became unsafe, unhygienic, adulterated, lot of complications came into force. That's why at present, nowadays, the food safety and the quality is more, more important. 
every person, every food, food technologist, every food professional, we have a crucial role to produce the safe food. Every food facilities, we have a crucial role to produce the safe food to the end user. And we have to make the people aware of the food frauds, food adulterations. Nowadays, many of the foods are become adulterated. These are all we will discuss in details. Now we will discuss about the hazards. Hazards are three types. One is biological hazard. And second one is chemical hazard. Third one is physical hazards. Our today's topic is biological hazards. Yes. Biological hazards divided into two types. Macro biological hazards and micro biological hazards. Macro biological hazards not potential, not significant, which can be like cockroach, grasshopper, others, rodents or something like that. So we can easily identify which, which won't force cockroaches or any grasshoppers or any insects, macro hazards, not much potential, not much this thing. When we come to the microbiological hazards, microbiological hazards again divided into before discussing about the microbiological hazards, first we could able to know the microbiology. Microbiology means the study of organisms which we cannot see with our naked eye. We can see the organism by the magnification of compound microscope or stereo microscope or electronic microscope etc. We have to magnify the image. Before discussing the Microbiological hazards, some words which are frequently we are using, those are contagious, infectious, or communicable, epidemic, pandemic, infodemic. These are the words which we are using frequently. I will just differentiate these, these words, the meanings. So, what is contagious? Contagious means the disease which can spread one person to another person or one organism to another organism by direct contact. It is called contagious. And infectious, the disease which can spread from one person to another person or one organism to another organism by the environment, means by the air by the soil, by the seaways, by the water, by the food, etc. That is called infectious. The third one is epidemic. The disease which can spread rapidly, widely, which can spread globally, which can spread rapidly in a community. It's called epidemic, not globally. It's epidemic diseases. And what about pandemic? The disease which can spread across the geographical regions means the disease which can spread across the continents is called pandemic. Yesterday, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 is a pandemic which is spreading across the globe, across the ge different geographical areas. Then the last word is Infodemic. Infodemic is nothing but spreading of unreliable, unethical information to become people more panic about the particular matter. COVID-19 now became infodemic. Why? Because now the social media has developed a lot. Media also there. So most of the social media most of the videos, most of the people are uploading in the social media which are unethical and which are not real. So that makes the people become more panic. So that people once they become more panic, so their system also releases cortisol and ultimately their immune system also getting reduced. It's my request to the people who are uploading the video about the COVID-19. Please upload the real things. If you know, you can upload. Don't make, the, don't make your video viral to uploading unethical matter or irrelevant things 